that's a major bummer is like uh it's hidden within the worst season all right you know what sucks even more? Season three is my favorite season of that entire show. Oh, when they like absolutely break Korra? Yeah. Mm. I love okay. those first three or four episodes, just the villain's introduction. There's yeah, no but... like monologue. There's no like, this is my um, like worldview. It's just pure them using their actions. To define their character. And it's everything you need to know about them. And why they need to be stopped. If I'm honest. Yeah. My brain works with shows. Is that once the season and or series is over. Mm -hmm. Just dumps everything. Just wholesale. Oh yeah. Uh, Unless it's like big sticking points. Mm. I I will not keep most most of that information. For sure. (laughs) I think I, it only. Oh, go ahead. go ahead. I know I watched all of Flash, all of Arrow, all of Supergirl, all yeah. of Legends of Tomorrow, but most of that information is straight up missing. So you know, here, here's I, how I remember things: the salt from particular episodes will always stay, because no matter how much I forget about Arrow, the second like Felicity fucking stood up on the wheelchair, nobody can break my memory. <laughs> <laughs> so so mine's similar to yours alex it's not necessarily salt it's whether or not i talked about it afterwards if i didn't care enough to talk about the show afterwards then i don't remember it uh, but like so my example is also cw show most of flash i don't remember except that episode where uh the giant shark guy shows up and yeah. like at the end just to get blown up after five seconds because i talked about that on like two or three episodes of our podcast oh you see like Corey and i kind of like talk about a lot of things uh-huh so like that doesn't necessarily work for me unless it's like mm. like it has to be extremely good or extremely bad okay no no fives for you yeah yeah i hear it i get you yeah all right so welcome to episode two of Samurai Flamenco. I think that was a fine enough introduction. <laughs> oh, are we recording? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah was re- I, dude, I didn't audio. notice till halfway through that conversation no, either. Because I know, I know how Chris edits. And oh. he wants, like, hours of prior footage dude, for the actual content. I stuff. thrive on that shit. I love... I know, I know you do. That's why I started it <laughs> three I love... minutes ago. <laughs> I love starting episodes and podcasts midway through conversation. Because I think that's about, I don't know, there's something about that. There's something to me about, like, if you're ever just hanging out with people and you walk into a room and they're midway through a pretty, like, interesting conversation, you're going to sit down and listen. And then before you start talking, but it's that it, but I think it's that little bit of, um, like preface and leeway that really gets you into the conversation and feels like you're part of it even if you're not saying anything if if i'm being entirely honest i think quite possibly sometimes it's too long oh yeah yeah, absolutely like like, absolutely because i've i've tried to listen to one of them before and like you were on this thing that i had zero context it's like if someone's hopping in and like maybe they know what the property is, like it's somewhat recognizable, mm-hmm. uh, and they catch on, that's one thing. But yeah, there's a completely other thing of like they have no idea what you're talking about. They've never touched base with any Absolutely. part of that. So like to keep it going for however long is just very confusing, and like to me, it would it would possibly make me click off. You know quicker absolutely i don't i totally understand that and i don't blame anyone for for leaving because because then i I told no i totally understand that but i really i that's more of like um i guess that's more masturbatory in the sense for me 
mm-hmm. in that that's the type of podcast <laughs> I like listening to. Well, no, like no, I, I'm just I, gonna I, like I, I get it because like at the yeah. end of the day, it's it's your content. I'm just giving like a critique, but like oh, as absolutely. long as you are like taking from it what you want out of yeah. the content you're producing, yeah, then it really doesn't matter what I have to say what anyone has to say and that's why you have 10 times more subscribers than i do no uh uh no yeah i totally i totally understand dude again i don't blame anyone who gets totally turned off by that okay yeah so but, this has been a podcast about talking about the current podcast we are in <laughs> about how we're not watching this episode already yeah yeah okay so you know let's just fucking click play on episode two of Samurai Flamenco. Um, I'm at zero. You guys at zero? Yeah. Sick. All right. Uh, we'll hit play on play. In three, two, one, play. You didn't check if the audience was at zero. What if they get lost? And it's like, oh, <laughs> I was supposed to be at zero, too. I thought they I was starting at three. They're, they're, they're big. They're, they're grown ups and or grown children. They're children that grew. Yeah. And if there are children watching this, why? Who would let you? You shouldn't be listening to this. I mean, really, with an intro <laughs> like that, how would you even know that this is not something you're supposed to be listening to? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like a five year old might be like, you know what? Yeah. Let's not quarrel this shit. <laughs> yeah. <that> yeah. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're forward. I might not even, like, who knows if I included the Legend of Korra discussion? I mean, I I started it halfway through the core discussion. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's safe to assume I'm just going to start at the rough edge. <laughs> it's safe to assume there's going to be no edits made. <laughs> Dude, with my schedule, like, it's, like, I don't know, man. Hmm. Depends how I feel on my one day off of the week. Fair enough. Yeah. How do you only get one day off at total? I work 50-hour weeks. Oh, Spire does this one. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't listened to them in like ever. I know. Where are they from? Where's Spire from? I, I've never heard of them. I, I They're think... like a J Rock band that did a lot of shit. Like, oh, okay. a few years Mostly back. openings. Mm. Yeah. That's what did like the Roni Kenshin one, right? Really? The like, ending? For the movie? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe that was like one. That was a cool <laughs> catch. One a croc. <laughs> He's wearing Beats by Dre. <laughs> oh, that's a Fanta soda. Yeah. Dude, my favorite thing in the world is... Um, like, one of my favorite things in anime is just uh, products that are that are supposed to look like products. Yeah. Just slightly off-brand. Like, like, Wick Donald's is still one of my favorites. Wick Donald's? Wick Donald's. Yeah. You know, you can get a pretty nicely designed website by Wix. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> if you sign up with the coupon code SHILL for 20% oh, dude, I don't off care. Shill. purchase. SHILL yeah. all you want, dude. Because <laughs> if I had a sponsor, I would SHILL every time my voice came on something. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so... Oh, yeah, it's that net that's supposed to prevent red pandas from getting into your trash. Why are there red pandas in Japan? Because they don't have raccoons. They only have red pandas, and they're adorable. What the fuck? She complained to the cops about this? <laughs> yeah. Yo, there's actually legitimately, like, people dressing up in Japan. Dude, I was just about to bring this up. You go ahead. You start off. I was just thinking about how I frame (laughs) this conversation. Oh, yeah. So people in Japan are dressing up as superheroes. I I follow a few of them. Uh, Uh One of them named Clean Arrow instead of Green Arrow. But they go around collecting trash. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So do you know about the U.S. stuff? The the actual people, the people who try, like really try to become superheroes. Oh no, those people are stupid. I'm talking about the people making an actual <laughs> difference. 
<laughs> you know, I won't actually believe it until Elon Musk becomes Batman. <laughs> Made that submarine that didn't work. You couldn't save those children. Yeah, that's kind of morbid. <laughs> oh, it super was. Hey, they got him out. It's just... That's, like, my favorite bit about that entire scenario. They It, it was actual, like, firefighters that were able to get him out because they knew what they were doing, and then Elon Musk shows up for a PR stunt with a submarine that wouldn't even fit through the cavern that the children were trapped in. Uh, what those toys? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's funny. I'm looking at these toys and I'm thinking about just how I want, like, Godzilla toys when I can't afford I, them. I have a recommendation for you later. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Let me know. It's called Play-Doh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Hang on. No, no, no. If I, was able, if I had the skills to make a Godzilla out of Play-Doh, I totally would. I would even bake that shit so it would harden forever. Oh. Huh. <sighs> Can't know I'm a, I'm a. I play with toys. What? Okay, so this is what I, what I don't understand. If these guys are statues as opposed to action figures, why oh, shut up. for action? <laughs> I knew I knew we, this was gonna. Uh, I don't know, man. It's a bit flawed, but whatever. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. No. Yeah. I need an umbrella rack. <laughs> oh, is oh, is this this weird, that weird thing of he can't like he's a model he can't have a relationship because it would ruin the image for people who follow him. I know I think it's, it's more of like a idol thing, thing than. A model thing. No, I think I think it's all models, dude. I was watching this one show called uh, Terrace House because it's one of the most fascinating shows ever to have graced Netflix. I've heard of that. I didn't know it was dude, on Netflix. Dude. I didn't if watch you it. watch it, you need to let me and Nick know and we will have a Terrace House like <laughs> The, the just... way you're slurring the word terrace makes it sound like you're saying terrorist. <laughs> oh really? Okay. That's great. <laughs> Because then we can finally talk about the omelet incident. Fantastic. But anyway, there was this guy. There was this male model on there, and like he brought that up at some point. Oh. That any model, like anyone who any model is not allowed to have a relationship. Otherwise, they're impure, or the weird fantasies that fans have can't be followed. And then you get the really like oh. fucked up sue shit. I like her. Yeah. Are you masochist too? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think this is awakening something, though. <laughs> Are you feeling it right now? Because I definitely am. I'm definitely in the moment. <laughs> I mean, I've still got that butt plug in. Oh, yeah. Chris, did but you not the one with the tail. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mine's the thing that's too far. Whatever. Pity what happens there later in the series. I totally don't know. I, <laughs> I like you know what? You. I've forgotten entirely. Oh, you don't even know. Yeah. It's a good thing we're rewatching it. It's been so long since I watched it. Eminem and M girls. Oh, that's right. I used to just call them the Eminem girls. The mm girls. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> that's better. Yes. Boring unintimidating the perfect male model alex it's michael yeah i know God. i just i just didn't think it was appropriate to announce that here <laughs> oh <laughs> it's okay yeah like i don't know how much audience crossover we're gonna get so yeah we'll see i oh. thought he was gonna head butter <laughs> fuck <laughs> dude it's gonna be so weird if like people from your channel actually do watch this I like, mean, we'll I... be promoting it. Oh, wow. So thank you. 
Why? Why would we not promote the stuff we're in? I don't know because it's mine. <laughs> <laughs> but like they're gonna listen. And just go. This is my fear every time I do something with you. Just go, man. I love Corey, but that Chris guy is such an asshole. He can't. You can't keep bringing him on this. <laughs> and then I'll just go. It's my channel. I can do whatever I want. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, are you afraid of my audience? No, I just have a very fragile oh ego that must be fed at all times. <laughs> hey, man, this is this is storyteller cast where we don't hide any of our uh, mental problems or issues. I mean, it's not like our mental problems or issues. <laughs> but if you are afraid of our audience, you Oh no, be... I'm actually just joking. Like it's not gonna matter to me. You only listen to the people that like your stuff. That way you never feel bad. Yeah. But if No. No, you don't you don't scroll down that comment section, dude. Yeah. But if <laughs> it's where you, you find like gold fans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I forgot about this. I think that's it. That's this is actually like a really cool moment, though. So I think that's how like it's a cool thing on how fans find each other, right? Oh yeah, totally. Like this happened. Just, oh, sorry. Go ahead. This kind of happened to me in like one of the the classes at the unnamed college that we go to. Apparently, sorry, college. Yeah. Yes, oh, colleague. Um, yeah, call it leg. Uh, I went to. I, w- I was leaving a class, and then my phone rings, and it was a Common Rider theme song. And then a dude in my class was like, "Oh, hey, is that Common Rider Double?" And I'm like, "Yeah, that is." And then we became friends, kind and then of. You found out he was an asshole and a horrible person, and you didn't want to hang in there. <laughs> well, no, that's how you met. Um. So we met one of my one of our friends in our acting classes. We were talking about. I don't want to bring up his name on the podcast because I don't know how he would feel about me talking about him on here. But I mean, uh, that's how we met one of our friend, one of my friends on the acting class. Me and you were talking about comics, and he just goes up to us and he's like, "Are you guys talking about comics?" Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. I don't, ah! I just don't mention his name on here. I don't know how he would feel about it. He was the one that took the class again, right? Oh, he went on. He kept uh, he kept doing art stuff. He's oh. actually trying to uh, he he's doing like local theater stuff right now and trying to do commercials. Oh, do you talk? You know, he volunteers at AX all the time. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's usually when I see him is when he does conventions at LA convention center. Yeah, yeah. I, I I just remember that he got into a nasty car accident. Yeah, that's I mean. That's how I knew we were friends. Is that, of all this, is that all the stuff I would say while, after that car accident <laughs> and we were still friends? Is it gonna be like Deadpool now? Yes. <laughs> Damn Holy shit, that is fast ass service. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I was just thinking, I was just talking about this with a friend of mine the other day. Um, because I'm thinking about taking a trip to Japan. 
in a couple months that I've been saving up for. Yeah. And I told him, I think I would be completely uncomfortable in a place where the service is like that, right? As it's portrayed in uh, anime, where it's super just polite and actually good, and to the point where it's almost like a master-servant style relationship. Oh, okay, yeah. Because I'm so used to just places where no one gives a shit. And like they, it like practically here's your food, you fucking pig, eat it. Like, well, <laughs> they just leave you alone. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you go to like particular cafes. By your, by the waiters. Yeah, I can get I can get the whole mask you see. It's like uh, what's the comparison? I don't know if I ever told you this, Corey, but there was a McDonald's by our college that I would go to all the time with our with my roommates. And at one point, they remodeled it to make it look really nice like all the other McDonald's they were trying, they were remodeling at the time. Uh-huh. It's like now it's super nice, almost like like semi-chic style. Uh-huh. But before, it used to just be a regular fucking McDonald's with like linoleum floors and uncomfortable booths. Yeah. And then I was really upset. Like, I was really upset that they had remodeled it to look nice. <laughs> And the, and all my friends are like, "Why you're you're acting crazy? Why are you so obsessed with this?" And I go, "I go to McDonald's, and I know what I'm doing. I know I'm I know I'm going to this place to eat really bad food just because I'm on a budget, and it's a guilty pleasure, and it's gonna make me feel com. It's gonna bring me quick satisfaction, but leave me horribly, horribly empty and unsatisfied after." I don't know. McDonald's and never I don't... ceases to leave me empty. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but hollow is what I mean. Yeah, no, <laughs> I get you. <laughs> and I don't want to go to a place that tries to cover that up. <laughs> that tries to hide <laughs> what I'm doing here. I go to McDonald's and I know what I'm doing. And I don't want there to be any, like, any, like, just, um... I don't know. Any, any like I don't know. I think this place is integral to your thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't want any. I don't want there to be. I don't want them to hide it of what right. I'm doing at this moment in my life. So while you were talking about uh, your guilty pleasures that you indulge in, mm-hmm. just a very good lesson. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Yeah. I was actually like paying too much attention to that. I didn't hear anything you're saying. To oh, that's, that's perfect, Alex. Because guess what? Can you catch us up, please? Oh. I I was paying attention. Oh, okay, I, I wasn't. Think, I think Corey was... wants to talk about this. I will give him the floor. All right. Oh well, it's just um. Oh wow, it's it's even put into action right now. Yeah. Um. I'm like, gonna, we'll stealing umbrellas is like the most casual crime in Japan. And oh, okay. It's like it's like. Not like the root of everything, but it's just it's like that tiny seed that like everyone kind of like starts with. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you can work at okay, so that goes back to the thing we were talking about in the last episode. If you can start at the smallest possible yeah. thing and work your way up, it's yeah. going to be a lot easier than trying to tackle everything at once. But it's still really fucking hard. Yeah, because you're still asking for a societal change. Oh. Yeah, man. <laughs> oh, come on. I know, Corey, I know you at some point used to wear Power Rangers pajamas underneath. That's not true. Pretty we tough. weren't. We uh, we were too poor to afford it. Uh, <laughs> um, there you go. But, I mean, like, I, I hate layers. Why would I layer on another Dude, item me before? too. Okay, yeah. Everyone used to tell me to dress in layers. I fucking hate it. Yeah. Like, I think it gets way too hot, way too fast, and, like... Wait, no, I take it back. I've done this before. We were filming for... <laughs> we were filming for something in my superhero suit, so I oh, kept... Oh, that doesn't underneath. count. That doesn't count. I oh. mean, like, on your own time. Oh. Oh, hell no. It takes way <laughs> too long to get into that jumpsuit. Yeah. I am not doing that. Yeah. No, sir. I don't even fit it anymore. I didn't even fit it the last time I wore it. <laughs> <laughs> My fat ass was jiggling around the entire time. 
You just, you just, it's one of those moments you look in and you go, man, I'm muffin topping. Yeah, Alex, you were there. <laughs> yeah, I was definitely there. I have. <laughs> and yeah, that was pretty. Uh... Theme song. The theme I have some intense emotions during that thing. Mm, yeah. And I've been told that I couldn't hide them as well as I should have. But <laughs> not like that was my. Oh. You know, one thing I'm really appreciating about like this part of the episode is like how far he's going for like the smallest fucking thing. Like Well, no, what... they, that just shows like it's supposed to be how far he'll go for his beliefs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even on the smallest level. And it totally works. I bet you someone in the writing room was really <laughs> salty that their fucking umbrella got stolen. Oh, dude, I bet you everyone in that writing room had their umbrella stolen. <laughs> <laughs> That's why so much love is given to this moment. <laughs> As you waste my time. He's trying. Oh, that really annoys me that an accessory is straight up missing and he'll. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm gonna. You know what, dude? I'm gonna. If I ever visit you up up there, I'm just gonna take one thing. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. Yeah, you're never coming over. <laughs> you'll never step foot. Yeah, key to your house, so we can visit you. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is like hypnotic. Oh. Yeah, it reminds me of it. Reminds me of a little bit of that one intro from Welcome to the NHK. I didn't watch that either. Oh, okay. Yeah. What is that about? That sounds very familiar, though. Um, it's very much about the uh the hikikomori uh, yeah. syndrome in Japan. Yeah. And a little bit on like a bigger scope, it's a lot about like different mental health issues. Holy fuck! Going on, and it's a really brilliant dive into it. Yeah, the studio looks very familiar. Yeah, welcome to the NHK. I highly recommend to everybody if they ever want to get into it. Uh, just fair warning: it's it may get a little real for some people. It did for me. Okay, maybe I should like wait until I have a job and then secure it myself as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, this is the perfect time to watch it. <laughs> you can writhe in pain as you realize how little you've done you in your life vulnerable. when you're vulnerable. It's like, what's another anime that really got me? Watamote. Watamote is way too real for me. Yeah. Oh, a preview or uh Yeah, that's the one thing I remember. I, I like really like the after credit scenes. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I like it. That bitch is psycho. <laughs> Sick. Yeah, another fantastic episode. Oh no, yeah. Um no, as I, I think I've stated before, these first couple episodes I'm deeply in love with because I think they're they're really like they have that point across we mentioned in the first episode, and they're really just going for it mm-hmm. and really honing in and sh- like showing how it would work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's a how like how that like I, I think they in Japan there's like the the what is it the delusional syndrome or whatever Mm. uh it's how that can work positively Mm. it's taking those ambitions to the extreme and like applying it um but you know we still have the rest of the show sure do (laughs) sure do uh let's see how am i feeling my absence
By the that? way, that toy line I was talking about, uh-huh. Shin- Shingeki Taizen is the name. Uh, it's basically like yeah. very like three three and three quarter inch uh, Godzilla vinyl toys. Okay. Pretty small, well detailed. The line just started. It's a good time to hop in. Godzilla Shingeki Taizen, and they also have like paper craft uh, cities, uh, like cool. little cities that you could uh, print out and make. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and they're oh, pretty yeah, cheap. You're, you're gonna have to send me a link to that. Yeah, per piece they're pretty cheap. Okay, there's still I think one that I am actually gonna for sure buy, um, if I can get if I can find it for a decent price. Is there's this one they did for Shin Godzilla? Where they did a special collaboration with Gynex. Um, specifically, it's supposed to reference uh, Evangelion. Uh, uh, yeah. And it's a robot version of Shin Godzilla. And it's called the Shinji. <laughs> and it's designed by... Uh, oh my god, what's the artist's name? The artist from Metal Gear. Uh, anyway, it's that guy. The artist from Metal Gear. He designs it, and it's one of the coolest looking fucking robot like figures I've ever seen. I yeah, want that to sounds see. like that sounds like a limited run something that'll be hard to come oh, by. Oh, dude, it's funny. It's like it's it cost it. There was no way I was able to afford it when it came out. <laughs> um, but it's so fucking cool. Anyway, I can go on about Godzilla toys and all the ones I can't afford. <laughs> I'm sure. I still have a dream to win that King uh, Kidora statue at the round one near me. So, oh, shoot. I yeah. didn't know they had a King Ghidorah to win. 500,000 tickets. Yikes. Yeah. All right. So that was episode two. Thanks for watching this far if you've made it. Um, right. And I'll try not to talk about my grievances with McDonald's <laughs> anymore. <laughs> Uh, and miss important plot points. Okay, yeah. So I think this is a good place to end, and we'll see you all in episode three. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That is Super correct. Juicy. Sick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see you later. Maybe. I'm not gonna upload another video after this. <laughs> um. <laughs>